welcome to Great Whirly's School News Report. To start off the show, your views on the badger calls. 15% of badgers have TB, also known as tuberculosis. The disease passes on from cattle to cattle, badger to cattle and badger to badger. This is your views on the call. First, we interviewed two people aged 30 and 50. This is their views. Badgers are part of British life and culture and people have no right to kill them. Badger calls are appalling and pointless as only approximately 45 out of 250 badgers will have TB. I know whenever someone or something has done something wrong, they always want someone to blame for it. In this case, the badgers are not that object. I don't know why the badgers are being blamed for the recent increase of bone bone TV. Our other interviewee said this. Why are the badgers being blamed? Just because one badger infects with one cow, the whole farming industry is overreacting. I know farms and livestock are really important for the economy of providing food, dairy and meat. But I really think it's also important to not kill innocent animals. There we, I plead that there is alternative ways to call other than calling, such yeah. as increase vaccinations for the badger to stop them having TV. We also interviewed two students from Great Worley, aged 11 and 14. This is what they said. I don't really know what TV is. I think it is an illness, but I'm not sure what it does. I don't get why the badgers are being killed. I don't think there's many left now after what everything that's happened. Our other said this. TB is an illness, which is really bad. I think the badgers have not done anything wrong, and I don't get why it's their fault, why they're being killed. Badgers could have a vaccination against TB. If the RSPCA raise enough money to do this, you can help by logging onto their website to donate. Thank you. Amy Harrison, six, tumbled into the water while clambering over the gates of the canal lock at a remote beauty spot at 6.20 on Tuesday. Amy was playing on the Warbley court lock, court lock on the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal. Her twin brother CJ and two of her friends was there when two of them fell in. Another child dived in to try and rescue one of the children but was unable to reach Amy. She, she just tried to scramble to the side. CJ sprinted half a mile to his and Amy's family home to tell the family what was going on. Rescue teams including police, firefighters and an air ambulance rushed there and managed to get Amy out of the water. She was then rushed to Birmingham Children's Hospital. Just after arriving at the hospital she sadly died. Also two other children were treated for hypothermia at the scene. Her family was devastated. A lot of people have been posting comforting quotes on, on Amy's mother's Facebook wall. Amy's mother has, says that she is truly devastated at the loss of her beloved daughter. The horse meat scandal is getting out of control with more and more shops having horse meat in their food. Surprisingly, Tesco's results show that 256 tests show no horse meat has been found in their products. Whereas bird's eye has horse meat in spaghetti bolognese and beef lasagna. Lots more stores are withdrawing products, although some tests show no horse meat. We interviewed a few people and the canteen staff about how they would feel if horse meat was found in their food. Their responses are as follows. I wouldn't care because it tastes nice. I would probably throw up and go comfort a horse. I wouldn't eat it. I'd sue the company. I would cry and be sick. I'd kill myself. Disgusted because I think eating horses is wrong. And then we asked the canteen staff three questions. Where do you get your beef from? And they said they don't know, they just cook it. Um, we asked the, the second question, how do you know it's, uh, it's beef and not horse? And they said we don't know but ev everybody doesn't mind about doesn't mind it and 
and our last question was how would you react if you had horse meat in your food and they said they wouldn't eat it and that's green thanks for listening Welcome to our BBC School News Report. I'm Ellie. And I'm Amy. Prince off camera, as Easter is fast approaching, fans are angered that they won't be, be able to see the Jones family celebrate. The Jones family, who live in Austin, Texas, are star, were stars of the reality TV programme, Quince for Surprise. The show followed the family with Quintuplets and an older daughter, Elliot as they made the best of everyday life with six kids. The show first aired on August 30th, 2010 on the Learning Channel in America and was later shown in England on Home and Health. The show was cancelled November 22nd, 2011 and ended Elliot Brooklyn, Britain, Jack, Lola and Ryan's Days of Fame. Since then, the fans' only method of keeping up with the Joneses has been Twitter, Facebook and the website The Parents, Casey and Ethan, both 37, set up. But this is not ideal for younger viewers. This has been the fans' method of supporting the family for two years and the campaigning for the show to return. The fans find encouragement from Casey and Ethan. We interviewed some people who didn't watch the show and asked them what life would be like with six kids. First we asked other students to see what it would be like to have five brothers and sisters like big sister Elliot. One person said, having two sisters is bad enough because you don't get time for yourself. Sometimes it would be fun to have five brothers and sisters though. Another person said, shocked, it would be a big surprise. And the last person said, absolutely hate it, too much fuss. We also asked teachers what they what they think it would be like having six kids like Casey and Ethan. One teacher said, a difficult task, I would consider not working to devote time to each individual. The second teacher said, extremely stressful, too much for me, it would be very tiring. It is a miracle that all five quints survived birth and now the quints are four and Elias is eight. Fans want to see them progress in life. So this is the big question, will the show return? Thank you for watching. Hello, I'm Catherine. And I'm Amber. And this is our news report on all things One Direction. One Direction, the British boy band, have, been, have recently released the name of their new 3D documentary film called This Is Us, due out in August 2013. The boys will be collaborating with director Morgan Spurlock, famous for making Super Size Me in 2004. Recently, Katy Perry and Justin Bieber have also released documentaries about their famous lives. Simon Cowell described the film as an access to all areas behind the scenes outlook of the group. He also added that the band have achieved what the band have achieved is incredible and that they and their fans have made history around the world and that this is for them. One Direction also recorded a comic relief single, 2013, One Way or Another Teenage Kicks. They also went to visit school children in Ghana. On part of their charity work, Lee and Pan added, One thing that was amazing was the spirit of the people out there. We went to a school which wasn't much of a building. There were no windows or anything. The boy band decided to put money towards the charity rather than the video. The Red Nose Day single has reached the top spot of the UK number one charts. We asked school pupils their view on these events. Many responses were very positive, saying they're excited to see the new 3D movie. Personally, my favourite is Harry Styles. <laughs> <coughs> Mine's Zane. Thanks for watching. My name's Charlotte. And my name's Caitlin. Twitter has changed the lives of millions of people, but it's not even a teenager at just seven. There are now a billion tweets posted every two and a half days. However, the first billion took more than three years to post. Twitter was launched in 2006 by a man called Jack Dorsey. It has come a long way since then, inspiring millions to chat on the internet. There were over 200 million users in 2012. That number is growing rapidly. According to marketingcharts.com, Twitter is the third out of the top ten social networking sites. But always remember to stay safe on the internet. People who are labelled as friend of a friend may not be the person they intend to be. The nature of social networking sites encourages users to provide an amount of personal information. To verify the person you follow is genuine, you should ask them in person or by a verified phone number. 
If following a celebrity, you should always check their personal information. Be careful what you tweet because you can't take it back. Happy birthday, Twitter. Thanks for listening. Hello, I'm Phoebe. And I'm Izzy. And welcome to Music Media. On today's show, Girls Allowed Split, One Direction and McFly team up. And Jessie J is all star summer party. Now, though, last night at 7 minutes past 12, Girls Aloud announced their split over Twitter. The band's tweet was, Dear Alouders, we just want to say from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. The last performance together as a group was the finale of their 10th tour in Liverpool. Next, McFly's Doggy Point has described the track as Stadium Epic and mentioned that One Direction's Niall Horan has co-wrote this song. He hopes the song will be chosen on the next 1D album. It hasn't got a title yet, but he wrote the song with Niall. This hasn't been confirmed that the song will be released, but Pointer has said that Niall has got some great ideas and had a lot of input in the song. Finally, Jessie J has said she will be performing at the All Star Summer Party on the 1st of June, where the big acts such as Amelia Lilly, JLS and Lawson will also be performing. Thank you for watching Music Media. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to Sport Report with me, Ben and me, Sam. Today we are going to tell you what's been going on in the Barclays Premier League. Sam, over to you. Thanks. Chelsea and Real Madrid are leading to the chase to land 22 million Manchester City star Yaya Torre. The furious Ivory Coast player has told City he will buy out his contract and leave this summer unless they hand him a new deal by Saturday. Torre, who is 29, still has two years of his £220,000 a week deal to run and will have to stump up £22 million pounds to buy out of his way of city. Newcastle striker Shirley Amiobi believes that the Football Association needs to consider bringing in retrospective action in the wake of Callum McManaman's horror challenge on Macedo Hadara. The tackle was horrifying and Callum McManaman only got a yellow card but Hadara got stretched off and got put into hospital. Over to Sam to see what's happening in Italy. The Aston Villa striker Andrew Swyman has been linked with a move to Inter Milan. However, the Austrian's agent has played down speculation. Swyman has bagged 11 goals so far this term, leading to rumours in some quarters that a move to Syria could be on the cards. What's going on in Germany then? Well, sir, Germany, German side Borussia Dortmund have confirmed they're linking for Edin Dzeko from Man City, but they've, but they've insisted that they have not agreed um, a deal for him. And Elliot, who we interviewed earlier, said that he'll probably go to Dortmund because it's a good side and he'll probably get a lot of playing time. Over to Sam, see what else is happening in the Barclays Premier League. The Manchester City goalkeeper, Joe Hart, has described Manchester United as a killing machine because they are 15 points clear at the top of the Premier League. Hart and City blew any slim hopes of catching their leaders by losing 2 0 at Everton, while Man United beat a struggling side 1 0. Liverpool managing director Ian Ara has insisted the club have no desire to sell Luis Suarez following the comments from the Uruguayan striker. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Hi, I'm Sam. And I'm Joel. And today we are going to be reporting on how Wales destroyed England's dream of a Six Nations glory. On Saturday, the 16th of March, 2013, Wales won against England 30 points to three. The only reason England got any point was for a penalty kick by Owen Farrell, number 28. At half time, the score was nine, nine to three to Wales. Wales, who scored three Lee half penny kicks. After half time, Alex Cuff. Cuffbend and scored two tries. Lee Halfpenny scored another, another kick, and Dan Bigger scored one conversion, one penalty, and a drop goal. Many fans were very disappointed about the way that we played and the way that Wales won their victory. This means that Wales have broken the streak since 1979. We asked some fans what they thought of the rugby match. One PE teacher said, I think England played very well for the first three quarters of the match. But then, in the last three quarter, Wales took over. Ben said, Wales were, were, 
won the game. It started well, and then we got the first try, but it went downhill from there. Thank you for watching.